Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and this will be a attempt at making a quick video about, so we all know how this is gonna go, quick video about memory the, the memory voltage mod that I did on that RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition. So first we're gonna go over the theory of the mod with just looking at the pinout of the voltage controller, uh, and then we're gonna talk about how, well, then we're gonna take a look at how I actually wired it up on this card right here, because quite frankly, I would not recommend soldering onto that unless you're like really freaking good. Um, and even if you're really freaking good, if you're lazy, it's just easier to go from there. Um, so, and, and one other point on the card. So anyway, first of all, uh, theory. And I guess with, like, so first of all, with the memory voltage, so unlike with core voltage, the memory clocks actually improve if you raise your memory voltage. So that's great. Even if you're on ambient cooling, it does improve your memory overclocking range. So that's great. The memory scales with, mem uh, with voltage, um, but it doesn't scale a ton. So essentially you're going to pick up a couple megahertz. Okay. A um, couple tens of megahertz. So in my case, I went from being able to max out at like 1375 offset to 1450 offset. Okay, your results may vary. Some cards might, you know, get more gain. Some might get less gain. Um, I don't know how far the voltage actually scales to because I didn't want to find out where the memory controller dies. So that, that kind of... It's kind of that, but, uh, you know, so in terms of performance gains, I mean, if you're in competitive benchmarking, then, you know, every little helps and it makes sense to do this. If you're just playing games, I wouldn't bother, um, at all because this is, a uh, like you lose your warranty, you lose, uh, well, yeah, you lose your warranty and I don't think it's like a danger, necessarily a dangerous mod, but then again, I run modified hardware in my daily system and I mod like everything I get my hands on, so... Um, I'm probably not the best person to ask about how safe modding stuff is. But, uh, yeah, the main concern, in my opinion, is just that you'll lose your warranty. So, that's it's kind of the main issue. Now then, in terms of the memory voltage uh, control, I guess, I guess let's take a look at that. So, this is the UP9512 uh, in, in all of the pixels I could get. Seriously, this is as many pixels as this pinout is available in because there's no public data sheet. So yeah, we're stuck with this. Um, and it's very, very simple because luckily for us, um, NVIDIA is not actually using much of their PWM vid function on this controller. So essentially what you have is something that looks like, well, this. You have your, you have one resistor here and another resistor there. And then you have ground. And that's it. That is literally the entire mod. Like, that, that is entirely how memory voltage is set on these cards. Which also means it is completely impossible for software to ever get voltage control over memory. Over memory like, to ever get memory voltage control on a Founders Edition RTX 2080 Ti. Because the way that's supposed to work is that this ref ADJ pin would be somehow connected to the ref in pin, which it isn't. So there's no way to control memory voltage from software on reference RTX 2080 Ti's. I am not sure about partner cards. I assume it would be the same. So essentially your memory voltage on these cards is fixed at 1.35 volts 24 seven. It's always at that value. Now then, um, VREF, this pin right here, pin number two, um, that sits at two volts. And so this is just a very simple divider to achieve that 1.35 volts. Um, because essentially what ref in does is whatever voltage you have on the ref in pin is the voltage you get on the output of the VRM. Um, this is different from a feedback mod where feedback mods work by skewing what the voltage controller sees on the output. Here we are actually telling the controller to output more voltage. So this is a much like this is a much less hacky way of getting voltage control than feedback mods because with feedback mods you're actually screwing up the ability uh, the ability of the controller to control the output. Um, here you're not screwing with the control loop at all, right? Like th this is this is actually uh, like yeah you're not screwing with the voltage regulator's control loop. You're you're just actually telling it what to run at. Uh, what to output. So this is this is like the proper way to get voltage control. Um, anyway, so the normal resistances here are like 2.6k on that resistor and 1.28k on the other. Now those values are rounded. 
um, a bit because, well, I mean, you, you can see I can barely write these quickly as is. So, um, the way you get more memory voltage, very simple. You reduce the resistance right here. How do you, you uh, reduce resistance? Well, with, uh, you know, resistors in parallel. So, like that. And if you put a 12K, like, like if you use a 12K right here, what you end up with is 1.4 volts-ish. Um, and that is where I would basically stop for long-term usage, because if you read the GDDR6 memory spec sheets, while GDDR6 is actually capable of withstanding very high short-term stress voltages of as much as 2 volts if the uh, test conditions are correct, um, I don't know what the memory controller will survive. And the long-term operating, vo uh, operating voltage limit is 1.39 volts. So, you know, well, like this works out to be just a little over 1.39, closer to 1.4, but... Um, Anyway, so, you know, you can put a 12k ohm resistor, bam, you've got permanent 1.4 volts, you get your memory overclocking range increase, and that's kind of that. Um, but obviously, if you're, you know, interested in actually fine-tuning your memory overclocking, then you're probably going to want something that looks more like this, where you're going to have a variable resistor, and then you're still going to want to set yourself a li and I have just really screwed that up, so there, and then you're going to want a... Yeah, you're going to want another resistor right here to set your voltage limit. So, um, like, a good value would be, in my opinion, say 5k, okay? Because the thing is, if you actually hit that 2 volts, it is going to kill everything super fast. Like, and the reasoning, like, I do realize that I just said that, you know, there's short-term stresses in the JDEX spec for GDDR6, say, it can run on 2 volts for a little bit. The thing is, um, two volt like that is under the condition that your VPP rail is higher than your VDDQ. VPP is at 1.8 volts, okay? And I'm not sure where it is on the card, and you'd quite frankly need to mod it if you wanted to run more than two, two volts memory. So you should not, uh, like, you if you set your memory voltage to two volts, this is all dead, that's all dead, all of this is dead, good chance that a good chunk of the outer silicon on the GPU is dead because that's where the memory controller is located. So basically, you really, really don't want to set it to 2 volts. In fact, unless you mod your VPP rail, you do not want to set it to even 1.9 volts because that's still above 1.8 volts and it's going to cause the same issue. So realistically, you want to set your maximum, like, you know, if you're brave, I'd limit myself to like 1.7 volts. If you're not brave, I'd limit you to like 1.6 volts. If you want to play it safe, 1.5. Okay, I honestly, I wouldn't recommend going above, uh, even going to 1.5 on like ambient cooling. 1.6 maybe on liquid nitrogen might not be too bad, but um, you know, I would really, really be careful with this because the thing is the memory chips, I'm pretty sure would survive all of those voltages. Like this, the memory chips probably wouldn't care very much. They might degrade after some time. On the flip side, there is the memory controller inside the GPU itself, and I'm not sure what that will tolerate, and I'm inclined to believe that it will tolerate a lot less voltage than the memory chips, because that tends to be the, the case in uh, a lot of scenarios. Like, there's a lot of, say, DDR3 memory chips where you can shove absolutely stupid volts through them, and there's a lot of DDR3 memory controllers where if you go above, like, 1.8 volts, it blows memory channels right up. So that's kind of the, the same concern with the GPU is just like, I, I wouldn't be worried about the memory chips, I'd be worried about the silicon. And bad news for you, um, if you blew up the memory chips, somebody might be actually like, it should be relatively easy to find somebody who can VGA rework those. Good luck finding a replacement core if you blow up the memory controller because yeah, you're, you're gonna need a new chip because you can't just cut the broken, like you can't repair broken memory controllers. So that's kind of that. Also, um, with the voltages, like, being careful means, like, basically not running them for very long periods of time. Because the main, con like, like, the issue with silicon degrading at high voltages is that it basically happens in, uh, it's fine, and then it's not. Okay, you don't get this indication of, hey, this this is a bad idea. You just kind of get, oh, now now you now you've screwed up, man. Now you've really screwed up. Now nothing ever works. So essentially, with a memory controller, like my concerns 
would be um, for like one failure mode could be something like uh, you have the card running, it starts artifacting. So you drop the memory overclock, you drop the memory voltage, it's still artifacting. You've probably damaged some part of the memory controller to the point where it's no longer capable of reliably transmitting data. You're screwed. There's no way you're repairing that. Um, the other option is the card runs and then it doesn't. <laughs> so basically you get a black screen and that's the end of that. The card never outputs an image again. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I quite frankly, you know, e even if, if you're not, if you don't have spare RT, like I'll put it this way, if you are, don't have spare RTX 2080 Ti's, I would not go above 1.4 volts, okay? I would just not go above that value. If you have a bunch of spare cards or you just don't care, knock yourself out. Hell, go for two volts if you feel like it. The, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure, like, that should insta-kill the card if you go for that. So, anyway, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the theory of it, right? You just have a variable resistor. Oh, and for the value of that variable resistor, I'd go for, like, 20k, um... Just, you know, 20k ohms. And that'll give you a nice... Because with the with the 5k over here, that'll give you a pretty nice adjustment range. And um, yeah, that, that'll be all great. So that's how that works. And uh, moving on, how would you actually implement it on this PCB right here? Well, um, so as we can clearly see, with this chip right here, we have pin 1, right? And we have this marking right there, which indicates the uh, ang uh, orientation of the chip. And uh, we can't actually see that here because there's a great big freaking thermal pad covering it, but that's fine because I've done all the measurements. So um, for pin one, it's this one. And the th cool thing is that pin one goes like that and then it goes to here and it also goes to like these or these. I'm not sure which side. I don't particularly care either. Basically, it's really easy to hook up here. If you hook up here, you get your pin one. So we're going to start here. And we're going to just draw out our uh, little, um, yeah, so we're going to hook up a wire there. And unfortunately for us, VREF, right, which is the other part we need to hook up to, right? That's what we're going from here to VREF up, up there. So the problem with VREF is that VREF goes, um, it basically goes out and straight through the board. There's a VIA right there and there's no VREF on this side of the PCB. At least not anywhere I could find it. So you're stuck in the, the situation where you have to go on the back of the card. All right, so welcome to the back of the card. Um, and uh, great, I need orange. That's not orange. Ah, there, that's orange. Um, so now we're on the back of the card. And um, yeah, uh, VREF is, is fun in the sense that it's this cap right here and this solder joint, this blob right there. So that solder bump right there and this cap. And that's literally your only two VREF connection points, those two right here. So essentially, you know, and, and if we like, let, like let's, let's say you're not gonna ever run the stock heat sink on the card again. So you might do something like, uh, you know, run this wire through the screw hole here. So I'm just going to put like an X there so we can go back on this side. And uh, here we're going to have our little X, right? Blech. So that's going to come through there. And then we put our resistor on that, like that. Bam. And your memory voltage is modded. And if you want the variable resistor, it doesn't matter which, which direction you do it in. Um, but uh, yeah, like it's just... For me, I guess here it's easier to for me to just draw uh, draw it from uh, like this side. So bleh, there's a resistor there, and you'd want your limiting resistor somewhere on the way as well. And that's all there really is to it. It's a really really simple mod, um, and in fact, V core is basically just as simple, except that like if you want to turn this mod off, you could literally just put like a switch right there, right? Like well. You, if you wanted to make this mod uh, switch offable, you, you would just put a switch like that, right? And then run your whatever resistance control thing you have, even if it's a fixed resistor. So then you have a switch and that, that's all nice and good. Core voltage, um, there's a resistor you have to remove because of the whole, uh, because of the whole ref ADJ thing, right? So if you remember this pin right here, so 
You actually have to disconnect ref ADJ if you're doing core voltage, and that makes things a lot harder. Um, because there's a bunch of, like, there's a resistor you have to desolder, and then if you want to switch, then you need to add the resistor back in, and then the switch, and it's a pain. So, anyway, luckily, memory voltage is very, very, very simple to do. So, yeah, very easy modification. Gives you a nice little bump in memory overclocking headroom. Uh, even on ambient cooling, which is, in my opinion, the, like, the best part is just, like, you can't really do anything about the core voltage, because even if you raise the core voltage a bunch, um, some cards will actually straight up black screen if you raise the core voltage too high. Because essentially the issue with the modern NVIDIA architectures is that since Maxwell, NVIDIA has basically optimized their core design for really high frequency, and in the process they created a bunch of hotspots. Um, and those hotspots are, are fine, as long as you don't start raising the voltage, which is why you don't see any voltage scaling, because if you raise the voltage, the hotspots get disproportionately hotter to the rest of the core. So while you're, you know, like while your temperatures might look okay, the reason why you're not seeing any voltage scaling is because those hotspots are just completely out of whack compared to the rest of the chip. Um, and so they get like, they, they don't gain any stability from you raising the voltage. Um, but that's why if you cool these chips down, they clock so much better, right? Once the chip is several hundred degrees below zero, those hotspots are, are you know, no longer an issue and, and you can start cranking up the core voltage. So, um, yeah, but that's why on ambient, like, core voltage doesn't do much of anything. But memory voltage works just fine. So that's kind of neat. Um, and that's really all there is to it. Like, it's not really a very complicated mod. Um, it's definitely like, you know, if you screw this up, very, very easy to kill your card. I mean, if you, if you set your, as I said, if you set your memory voltage to two volts, you can say bye bye memory, bye bye memory, bye bye memory controller. Um, but, uh, if you don't screw it up, then, you know, you can get a nice little bump in, in memory clock speed. And I think for competitive benchmarking, like, sure, why not? For daily usage, I mean, I'd run it for daily, for, uh, sure, like, I'd run it for daily. But uh, I, I'm not sure, like, the, the benefits aren't exactly, like, massive. So, you know, if you're somebody who cares about, like, I don't know, like, effort versus performance gained, this is a lot of effort versus not much gain. So, you know, that, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, that's all there is to it. So, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. And if you'd uh, like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon and there's also Teespring and there's like shirts and socks right now up there. Um, and both of those help out immensely with running the channel. So yeah, if, you, if you'd like to, you know, pitch in, um, you, have, you have options for that. So that's that for the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.